a morning of preparation. 70 years in the making. It all began in San Francisco in 1945. After some 70 million lives were lost to war, delegates, advisors, observers, and civil society from around the world arrived here, determined to find a path to renewal. A pledge which on June 26th was signed as the Charter of the United Nations. There were many who doubted that agreement could ever be reached by these 50 countries differing so much in race and religion, in language and culture. Seven decades later to the day, the United Nations, many of its officials and staff, joined by ambassadors, dignitaries, and the public, come together to commemorate the principles upon which it was founded in the city of its birth. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. They dare to believe in something bigger than person or country. For two months, they turned San Francisco's war memorial into a peace palace. More than 3,000 women and men took part. What I remember most about the period was the feeling of hope. Ellen Magna Newman was just 16 when she worked as a Spanish translator for the signing of the charter at City Hall. I'd grown up with both wars. All of a sudden, that had ended. And here was no more League of Nations, but a charter that described what could happen to make the world a better place. The United Nations is the hope and home of all humankind. The charter is our compass. And it's a compass which continues to point towards the future. In many of the same meeting rooms in which the groundwork of the charter was laid, Today, some of the world's top leaders in technology met to discuss just how technology can work with the UN to help solve modern-day problems. And change was on everyone's mind when on the same day, marriage equality was granted as a human right to all in the United States. Stuart Milk, nephew of the renowned late LGBT activist Harvey Milk, presented Secretary General Ban Ki-moon with the Harvey Milk Medal for the UN's LGBT rights free and equal campaign. It's a, really a recognition of the leadership that Ban Ki-moon has given to this global movement. Charles Radcliffe is senior UN human rights advisor on sexual orientation and gender identity. Many people are surprised to learn uh, this softly spoken Korean gentleman who has emerged as a great advocate for equality for LGBT people around the world. And as walls to equality were broken down across the country on this day, other walls became a canvas. So I think what I'd love to continue doing with the UN is serve as a visual translator for, for issues which are hard to talk about. Celebrated street artist Zio Ziegler created a 13-story high mural a vivid medium of expression inspired by the United Nations global goals. My father just turned 70, and I think that this event is like, it's, it's, it's a beautiful parallel, right, with, the, with both birthdays happening at the same time, because I think if the UN can play a personal role in all of our lives, it, it's a humanizing aspect to it, an organization which is larger than life. And I think if I can deliver a similar feeling for my mural or, or, or design, maybe there's that point of accessibility for, for the random kid off the street. It's a mural that stands as a towering monument to the efforts and ideals that began seven decades earlier an enduring symbol of hope.